there, it's Nicole. Welcome to the Waffle Flower channel. This is It's in the Details, and today's card showcases some no-line watercoloring using the brand new Hey Girl stamp set with this adorable little sloth. I'm also using the flowers from that. I'll be incorporating a greeting from the Hibiscus stamp set, frames from the Lacy Layers dies, and also a chunky grass border. I'm going to take some Bristol Smooth White cardstock first and using a light dye ink. This is the Waffle Flower Coffee Loves Milk ink. I'll ink up the sloth and stamp him on this Bristol Smooth cardstock. When I'm doing no line watercoloring, I tend to like to use a dye ink in a really light color. It's going to give you a great um, guideline, I guess I want to say, for no line watercolor, but yet you're still going to be able to cover it up with whatever color medium you're using. These are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I'm starting with the little mask here on the sloth space using a natural gray in the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I laid down a bit of color and I'm going to blend it out with a water brush pen. The pen does have some water in it. Then color in the body with a gray brown and a gray tint. Tracing along the lines of the stamped image with my darker color and then pulling in a little bit of the lighter color. These markers tend to blend on their own. If you don't want to add any water at all, you could totally just color the image in using a no line technique with these markers themselves without the addition of water. You could also use Copic markers if you wanted to. Um, to do a no-line look. There are so many different options. Once I have a little color laid down, taking that water brush pen again and blending it out for that watercolored look. I just love the detail here. Any of the little light brown areas that maybe are still showing up, I went over with my darker pen for some detail. Finish up part of the claws here holding onto the tree branch. Again, grab my water brush pen and lay down, pull out a little bit of that color. Move on to his bow tie, which I'm using some shades of red for. Darker color first, blend that out a bit with my lighter red, and then go in with my water brush pen and pull that color out. I like to let these excuse me, air dry on their own. You could hit it with a heat gun if you wanted to speed up the drying process a little bit quicker. Even over this little branch up here that was more of a solid type of image, I went over it with the green pin for that no line look, tracing over the design of the leaves with some green and then blending it out with the water brush pin. I'm going to pull in a dark brown here for the branch and then blend it out a bit with the beige. I also forgot to stamp my flowers, so I'll do that now again with that same Coffee Loves Milk dye ink. The claw color, the dark gray tried to bleed into my tree branch, so I'm just picking up a little bit of that and wiping it off on my scrap paper. Go ahead and do the leaves over here for the flowers, just like I did the other leaves. You can see that he's really taking shape. One thing to note with no line watercolor or no line coloring is if you're doing an animal or a face or something like that, more than likely you're gonna need to go in with a black pin or some sort of a pin to add that detail back in. I'm letting the paint completely dry before I go back and draw in his nose and his mouth and add those eyes back in. Adding some color to my flowers over here. The lighter colors you're going to be able to see maybe a little of the outline, although that doesn't bother me too much 
over here, I think you still just see the flower. It isn't so much the, the, the brown outline. I did even go back in and add a little bit more red before blending it out a little bit more. For the hat, I decided to make it dark gray, same color I used for the eyes, and the band around the hat with some red to coordinate with his bow tie. Again, I will blend those out with my water brush pen before I go to coloring in the background. The background can do can be colored many different ways. You could mask these images off and add the ink. I just went and pulled a kind of scribbly colored around the image with my haze blue, which is a really light blue Zig Clean Color Real Brush marker. And once I have scribbled all the way around the image with that marker, just kind of laying that color down, I'll take the water brush pen and blend it out. You could also take a paintbrush and a light blue paint and color in around it, whatever you want to do. Once I add the water and really get a nice wash going, it's going to mute this blue so it's not near as dark, but it'll highlight it enough to give enough definition to see a little bit of blue sky and really make that sloth and branch pop against the background and the frame I'll eventually add. So I'm just pulling that color out. I'm gonna keep working it until it looks good, looks nice and blended. Get it all the way around my image. And of course, let it dry. I did go back in and add a little bit of detail to the center of one of the flowers. Add a little bit of blue down here near the bottom so there'll be some definition between the background and the green grass border. Drawing in the face and the claws with a black fine, fine tip pen, black gel pen for the nose, and a white opaque pen for the eyes. Once that white ink is completely dry, I'll go back in with a black pen and add some little pupils. I'm applying Mode Lawn and Twisted Citron Distress Inks to a die cut chunky grass border here, also die cut from the Bristol Smooth cardstock. Spritz this with a little bit of water and then I'll blot it dry. That'll give it a tiny bit of um, distressing, not over the top. I laid out my frames from the Lacy Layers 2 dies to give me an idea of where everything is going to fit. Taking a greeting from the Hibiscus stamp set and I'll stamp part of the greeting with black ink and then the rest with the My Pleasure red ink from Waffle Flower. Now I'm showing cutting a black cardstock frame with these two dies from the Lacy Layers 2 die collection. Once I die cut this, I realized I didn't really like the black frame. It wasn't just wasn't kind of what I was going for with this particular card. I'm gonna do the same technique and die cut a white frame. I just didn't video that. So you can see how I die cut the frames. I can save this black frame for another project. Here's that black ink. I waited a second to, to stamp that. I like to stamp it off on some scrap paper first to make sure that it's stamping really nicely. There's part of the greeting, the rest of it I'll stamp with that My Pleasure ink for a two-tone greeting. Some little hearts from the Hey Girl stamp set stamped with the My Pleasure ink as well. I stamped them once and then I decided I only wanted one more heart, so I'm gonna clean my stamp off really well and carefully only ink up one of the hearts and stamp that up there kind of to the right of the other two. Make sure that's gonna look good. Go back in with my black pen and finish up the eyes. Add some Stardust Glitter Pen to the centers of the two flowers. They're completely dry now as well. 
I trimmed down my background panel and I'm adhering that to a white top fold card base. I've adhered my grassy border, trimmed it down just a little bit as well. I'm gonna back the frame with a little bit of foam adhesive. I'm trimming this half inch wide foam adhesive in half and we'll put this around all four sides of the frame. If you wanted to double it up and back the frame with some acetate, you could make this a shaker card really easily. I like the little bit of dimension to the frame to really make what's inside the frame pop. The stitching detail on these Lacy Layers and Lacy Layers 2 dies is incredible. I love it. In real life, there's some nice little detail and it's just really showy. I'll adhere that around the whole background. Just make sure and get it lined up. And that is going to finish off this no line watercolor card. For more product information, please visit waffleflower.com. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for joining me today, and we'll catch you next time.